The Low Income Housing Tax Credit in Five Minutes. A production of CEDUM, the Community Economic Development Association of Michigan. This is a story about Scooter, Juanita, and the community they live in. Scooter is a nonprofit developer, and he wants to turn the abandoned school down the street into apartments that some of the low income families in his community can afford. He's done his research. He knows that this is a good location, that he'll be able to maintain the building and make his numbers work, and that there are plenty of people who work in the area and need good quality housing they can afford. He's talked with the neighborhood residents, he's got his team picked out, and he's ready to go. Except, he needs $750,000 in cash up front, or capital, to help him get started. Juanita is the community investment officer at Hometown Bank. Hometown Bank has two problems. One, like many people and businesses, they wish they could pay less money to the federal government in taxes. Two, they're required by law to make investments in local communities, and they get a rating based on how they do. Last year, Hometown Bank got a needs to improve rating, and they're not happy about it. As the community investment officer, Juanita needs to figure out how to solve the second problem, and maybe she can solve the first along the way. Scooter knows about the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program from the research he's done. He knows that his project would meet all the requirements for the program, and they're complicated, so we won't explain them now, and he submits an application to the state government. Since he lives in Michigan, he applies to MISHTA, the Michigan State Housing Development Authority. MISHTA has a certain amount of tax credits to give to developers each year, and this year, Scooter's project gets chosen. Mishta gives Scooter a non-refundable federal tax credit worth $1 million over 10 years. This sounds great, but there are two problems. First, his company is a nonprofit and doesn't owe federal taxes. He can't pay $1 million less than zero, so the tax credit isn't worth anything to him. Second, he needs money now so he can build apartments. Luckily, he has a plan. He knows that Juanita is looking for an investment opportunity for Hometown Bank and a way to reduce the bank's tax liability. Juanita and Scooter decide to make a deal. Hometown Bank will give Scooter 75 cents for each dollar of tax credit, or $750,000, and they'll become a partner in the project for the next 15 years, sharing the risk. Scooter will get the money now and be able to use it to work on his development project. Hometown Bank will be able to take $100,000 off of their tax bill to the federal government each year for the next 10 years. And, because they're investing in a project that serves low-income folks in their community, they'll get a higher rating under the Community Reinvestment Act. It's a win for both Juanita and Scooter. And also, for the construction workers and consultants Scooter will hire, for the families that will move into the apartments when they're done, and for the neighbors who will live next to other people instead of an empty, unsafe building. Hooray! 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 Unfortunately, this story is kind of a fairy tale. It shows how the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program is supposed to work, but not how it really does work during a recession. Here's what's happening now. States are still getting tax credits to give out, and developers are still getting them, like always. But several major investors are no longer buying the credits because they're not doing well financially, and their tax bills are already too low. Why would they pay for a tax credit that costs more than their tax bill? For a while, this meant that many developers were stuck with tax credits they couldn't sell. Today, more banks and insurance companies are stepping up to fill the gap, but they're very cautious, and they look only for the strongest projects with the least risk. Scooter could still find an investor for his project, but he might need to find a partner and a more experienced developer with a high net worth to get the investor to agree. If you're planning a project that will create affordable rental housing and you're willing to put in the work over the long term, a low income housing tax credit could help you get your project off the ground, literally. For more information, visit hud.gov or michigan.gov slash